Hey, Christian, I'm back. Hello. How are you? You ready to go? I am. Okay, you gonna give me a little bit more than that, or are you just gonna just give me one word answers? No, I, if I speak, I might maybe get in trouble. So oh. I, I don't want to get a fine and risk community service. So I'll. Do you know? I see. I see what you're doing here. I see what you're doing here. I'll speak to the listeners outside the podcast if they want to message me. <laughs> if they want to take it outside, I'll do that. But I'm not risking Greg giving me community service if I say something wrong. <laughs> For f- Hello and welcome back to the Fast and the Curious. I'm Betty Glover, joined by our paddock princess, Christian Hugill, to go through all of the talking points from Singapore Grand Prix right after Kylie Minogue waved the chocolate That's flag. I think that was your favourite bit, wasn't it? Highlight of the Grand Prix by a country mile, <laughs> Dame Kylie of Minogue, bringing it for the gays and the girls. Thank <laughs> you, Kylie. Oh, we needed that. I needed that lift. I tell you, after that ball fest, I really needed that. Queen Kylie. Yeah. What a woman. <laughs> what a woman. It definitely wasn't in the same league as last weekend of Baku, was it? Because Baku, for me, was like, you know, on a hot day you. when you crack open a cold Diet Coke and you put some ice in it and a slice of lemon and it's just perfect. This weekend was probably more like, I don't know, like a it Robinson's... It was a mediocre cup of tea, wasn't it? Yeah, or Robinson squash or something. Like, it, it was there, it did the job. It was all right. The Robinson squash of Formula One, the 2024 Singapore Grand Prix. Anyway, Betty, welcome back. It's your first appearance on the podcast for about nine months. Did you have a nice holiday? I had a two-week holiday, Christian. Don't be so dramatic. Oh, don't we know it? If we follow you on Instagram, <laughs> don't we know you had a holiday? Good Lord. <laughs> you can talk. When you go, I've been watching you go on holiday all bloody year. Thank you very much. I have had two holidays, but anyway, should we talk about the Formula One? Two, yeah. Loads of talking points. We're going we're gonna to get on to Max and his swearing in a moment because I'm sure... You've got opinions on it. Yeah. I've got opinions on it. And I think everyone else does as well. Uh, we're also going to see what's in your cubby hole or Christian's cranium, as I think is a, a better name for it. What? Well, you, what's inside your cranium? Christian's cranium. Are you okay? Uh, but let... <laughs> Clearly not. No. Um, but let's start with the race. Lando, a dominant win. Um, did you enjoy that race? I always enjoy the the midnight ride that is the Singapore Grand Prix, um, but that one was a little bit slow. Uh, it wasn't a classic Grand Prix. We've been absolutely spoiled in terms of Formula One races recently. There have been some absolute belters, um, and that one, let's be honest, was not a classic Grand Prix but, um, you know, Lando did take a chunk out of Max, not as much as he'd have liked to have done. I think McLaren and, and Lando would have much preferred it if Oscar had managed to get himself up there in second. But a, a really, really strong performance from Lando Norris and silencing some doubters, I think, who who mm. doubt whether he's got it in him to take this championship fight to Max. That is exactly the sort of performance we needed from Lando Norris. Let's look at what this does for the championship then so Lando obviously won Max came second Piastri third um a win from pole as well we we need to talk about that because that was really impressive huge transformation so in the drivers Max is on 331 Lando's on 279 so that's a 52 point difference in the constructors McLaren are on 516 Red Bull 475 that is a 41 point gap in the last episode that you did with Greg you said that Lando had to go out dominate this race win it with confidence and he did that didn't he do you think he's he's doing enough could he take this driver's championship well so many of his fans say to Lando look Lando I believe in you but not everybody does and I think that is to answer your question exactly the sort of performance Lando needed it was very Zanvort like I raised the point in the Zanvort podcast where he turned up and from free practice looked really competitive this performance where you come in you grab, you grab the weekend by the scruff of the neck and you look like you're going to win from the minute you go out on track on Friday and that's what happened with Lando this weekend he was fantastic in qualifying a really really impressive qualifying when the pressure was on everybody having to run super late because of the stoppage, because of signs. Aced his start. Absolutely perfect start. Mm. And then uh, dominated the race with a true Zanvort performance. And and people, you know, have been too quick recently to say, okay, listen, I'm one of the people who say how impressive Oscar Piastri's been, but this is why Lando has got 
more points than Oscar. He's capable of weekends like this. He is someone, even though it's been doubted by some people this year, who can fight for a world championship. That was a properly brilliant grade A Lando Norris performance at one of the trickiest Grand Prix of the year. Do you think also, like, he's still very young, isn't he? Is, is, is it a thing of experience as well? Like, being in this position where you are sort of the dominant car you're with the dominant team the team that's dominating and you've got to get used to the sort of being chased not being the chasee it's a great point on both fronts because people forget until the last couple of years max made mistakes as well you know max has only fairly recently started to look the complete driver and, and lando has has got a couple of years less experience than max so you're absolutely right we've seen similar with charles leclerc and yes McLaren as a whole team, not just Lando, have had to very quickly get used to finding themselves in such a dominant position and get used to winning races. We've seen that with some of the mistakes they've made in previous Grand Prix. So this was a sign of McLaren acing it again, like they uh, did on strategy last time out as well. McLaren were fantastic. Lando was fantastic. We need that in these finals. It's six Grand Prix. We need that week in, week out from Lando. Um, because with fastest lap points, with sprint races available, this championship is on, especially if anything were to happen to Max. You know, M Max, by the way, I should say, fantastic this weekend. He was awesome. Yeah. Um, but it's not guaranteed that Max will finish second week in, week out, although they are talking positively about an upgrade they're bringing to Austin. And I think that's going to be a really interesting part of the Austin Grand Prix weekend is, mm -hmm. is you know, and Lando said as well, people are writing Red Bull off too quickly. So, but but listen, championship on. Yeah, I think it's, it's Max's to lose, isn't it? But we've had a question from Chris on during this race. Chris says, has Lando always had this pace and just needed the right car or has his driving improved this season as well? The answer, I think, is both. Um, I have said since the very early days of him being in the sport and actually before he got to the sport, I like the look of Lando from Formula 2. I think that Lando, has, as I've always said, Lando's got it in him to fight for a world championship. So that, to that part of Chris's question, he's always been waiting for a right car. Um, Lando has had some low points this season, undoubtedly, where he's made mistakes in combat, where he's made mistakes full stop. He's admitted that himself. We've had debates on this podcast as to whether he's been too hard on himself in these periods of time. Mm -hmm. But he'll get to the end of the season and think, wow, that was a learning curve. And he'll go into next year, I think, even stronger still. So, yeah, there's never, even in his, even in his, bad moments this year there's never been any doubt in my mind that Lando has got what it takes to fight for a world championship he's just needed to go through some difficult moments which again people are too quick to um forget that that Lewis and Max and people like that have had to do the same in their career too it's not always been roses you know Max's nickname was Max you know Max I think people said Chris Stappen and that sort of thing because of how many crashes he had this, this <laughs> does happen drivers don't become the real deal straight away I want to take a moment to just think about Burnt Mylander because we haven't seen him for ages. We haven't seen him since June. It's been eight races without a safety car. I fear that we're never, ever going to see him again. I can't even remember what it looks like. The last action he had was when the car broke and he had to put it into a spin to stop himself going straight <laughs> into a wall. It broke. That's been the most action he's had for a while. It breaking. he will have been glad for, to have that looking back now. It gives him something to do. We're in a real <laughs> era at the moment of, and it's disappointing. These best drivers in the world are really driving like the best drivers in the world. Stop it. Frankly, this was a race where somebody, for the good of the sport, needed to stick it in the wall mm. to make a f up. And to have the audacity, Lando Norris, George Russell, Kevin Magnussen, to have the audacity to come so close and not actually do it. So it, close. So close. Not on. Stop <gasps> performing on, at such a high level. What do you think it, this is? Elite sport? Do something entertaining. Throw it into a wall. Safely, of course. We don't want anyone to get hurt. But spin off. At least at least bring, give us a yellow flag. That's not too much to ask for, is it? We've no, The last yellow flag in Formula 1. This is a stat. It's 1997. It's Where, been that long. <laughs> Where was that bloody lizard when we needed him? Like, oh, something. Oh, what a moment. Something. What a moment the lizard was in the weekend. Who knew that lizards, when I run, right, my legs stay like the same, like they don't stick out much. Who knew lizards went so, the, the back legs stick out so much when they run? A... Lizards can run very fast, Christian. <laughs> For those watching on YouTube, you'll have just seen my impression of a lizard running, which I didn't know I had in me until now. No, very interesting. I've never heard you. I'm practically yourself. David Attenborough. I mean, 
Sort of. Oh, things we do for love with Formula One, I do lizard impressions. David Attenborough for cars. Mm. But um, anyway, Hattie got in touch with us and she oh, says... Oh yeah, how is Hattie? Does the lack of safety car mean that the sport is getting safer? I feel like you sort of covered that by saying the yeah. drivers are just really good, but it's an interesting question. Well, Hattie, the lackey of safety car is more down to, I think, driver's skill rather than F1 getting safer. I just think it's a really good crop of drivers where we don't have any Kamui Kobayashi, Roman Grosjean, Mick Schumacher drivers who you know are good for a crash. You know, and also even some of the drivers that are, say, struggling to keep their place in the sport at the moment, like Kevin Magnus and Valtteri Bottas, they're more of the Zhou Guan Yu. They're all quite experienced, you know, so we've not. Uh, and also all the kids are doing really well. You know, um, look at the kids that have been thrown in recently. Carla Pinto, Behrman, they're coming in and doing really well, not being thrown in and looking sort of out of their depth. So um, do you think it's also because there's like too much on the line as well, maybe? So they're playing it a little bit safer with their driving? No. No, I no. think it's. Um, I, I think it's. I don't think anyone's playing it safe. I think it's talent. Love it. Don't forget, we we didn't have any driver changes from last year to to this. So, also everybody's quite used to where they are. They're used to their teams. They're used to the cars. There's quite a bit of a status quo. I'd be very surprised if this carries on into next year when everyone changes round. Um, there's also no new tracks on the calendar this year. It's not like people are getting used to circuits. Um, it won't last. It never does. Not making mistakes on the track, but. There are some drivers that are making mistakes off the track, or some people say they're making mistakes. Uh, Max Verstappen has got to do community service for swearing. So I think it's time to <sighs> talk about this, Christian. We need to. Go on, you go first. I'm intrigued. You've been telling me all day that you've got opinions on this, so I'm, I'm ready for your rant. I've got my, my water beside me, my snacks. There's a lot of people who are new to Formula One, the FIA, the sports governing body. They have an incredibly important role. You talk, we talked just then about safety. They ensure safety standards in the sport. Vital. They've got the driver's lives on the line. They set the rules in the sport. Vital for the enjoyment of the sport. The FIA have crucial things to be worrying about. So why? They did this last year with jewellery. Why they all of a sudden decide that they're going to make a point of something that nobody's talking about. Nobody is bothered about them swearing. This is elite level sport. Everybody swears in elite level sport when the pressure is on. We're just very lucky to be getting inside access to it by listening into the drivers. If you don't like them swearing, don't broadcast the team radio and of course it's formula one that broadcast the team radio not the fia but as far as i'm concerned this is an fia thing not an f1 thing so i just think they've got more important things to worry about is my first point the second point is when max then swears in a press conference in a weekend we've been talking about swearing to, to sentence him to some bizarre form of community service yeah what what is the community service is he going to be picking up litter what what's I've he going to be doing absolutely no idea it's just bizarre and it's patronizing it's just patronizing so i absolutely applaud max verstappen for playing them at their own game mm. he was saying journalists this is nothing to do with any of you guys i'm completely happy to talk to you guys so come on we'll do it outside in a, away from an fia sanctioned press conference loved i loved it. that absolutely loved it loved the way lando and lewis backed him as well and lando having a joke saying oh it was awful yeah. it's been a bad weekend for the fia they've made themselves look silly this weekend and they just didn't need to because the fia do some brilliant work and have some brilliant people working for them who've got a huge love of the sport and only want to make the sport better they don't need to be worrying about things that just don't need to be worried about this is top level sport this isn't balamori which i understand is coming back this is top level sport there's going to be swearing we need to well deal with that but i think it is an interesting talking point because the the, the guys on sky quite a few of them were saying that they agree with it and that the drivers shouldn't be swearing in press conferences because you've got children watching, you've got kids, you've got families, whatever. Some people find it offensive. Oh, uh, yeah, but uh, come on. A swear word's going to slip out of you now and then. Come on. Well, I understand that. But at the same time, you're allowing the drivers and you're, you want the drivers to be able to express themselves. Therefore, you've got to let them express themselves. They're under a lot of pressure. So, yes, they are going to be swearing on, on team radios, rightly or wrongly. That's just the, the way it's, it's happening. But also, like, come on. Just say to Max, look, please, can you just try and tone down the swearing? Because for our audience, we, we, we're not that big on it, whatever. 
just say that to him if you want to, though. You don't need to give him community service. Do you know what I mean? Like, what? What is it? He's an adult, and this is professional sport. Can you can you imagine that happening in the Premier League? Yeah, but also Betty as well. It's not like the swear. All right, swearing on the team radio happens all the time, but it's always going to. You're not going to change that. It's top level sport. These guys are under intense pressure. Yeah. It's not like swearing in the press conference is a consistent problem. A swear word slips out, and it's a mistake. It's not like if Max was going in weekend in, weekend out, and effing and jeffing in front of poor old Tom Clarkson. Yes, fair enough. If you've warned him once, twice, three times, whatever. Yes, fair enough. This is what I mean, though. Just give him a little warning. Just say to him, look, Max. Yeah, just don't, don't, just don't, don't, don't. Yeah. You don't need to make some sort of show of him and make him do some sort of community service. Just bizarre. What even is the community service? What is this about? So he's been ordered by the FIA to accomplish some work of public interest. Who, what, what does that mean? I don't understand. What, what's he going to be doing? Present a podcast. I think Max could guest present this podcast and I think that counts. So Max, and he's been on before, Red Bull Press, if you're listening, we are very happy for Max's community service to be present this podcast. He, he couldn't just be a guest, he'd need to present. So, but uh, that's fine. And you know what, Max? You, you can say whatever you want on our podcast. He'd need, need to do a NordVPN ad read. Yeah. You know, he'd need to get, get stuck in and get, get, you know, get muck in with it. But... Yeah, that's what I think that he should do. It, it, you know, the public listen to this podcast. It'd be a matter of public interest. That's what he needs. Could Max get even more punishment for not doing this public service? <laughs> Is this going to go on and on and on? Oh, I have no idea. Well, what are they going to do? Well, it's Max Verstappen. What are they going to do? But stop him racing. Come on. I'm pleased, though, that Max Verstappen's spoken up about it, and I'm pleased that other drivers have backed him up because it is ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. It's just, uh, it's totally ridiculous. Let's move on and talk about Daniel Ricciardo. We're potentially expecting an announcement in the potential coming days. We don't really know, but there's speculation that Liam Lawson will be taking his seat. We'll talk more about this in more detail on a future non-debrief podcast. So there's lots more to say on this. Liam Lawson deserves to be in that seat. And the rumour has it that Red Bull's bosses are saying, we well, still want to use that team for developing young drivers. And if we're not doing that, then we have a problem here. Yuki still has potential for the future, more so than Daniel. Daniel's not been especially bad, but he's not been especially good. So we're going to give Liam Lawson some seat time, but we're not totally ruling Daniel out of the equation for the future. Daniel's in this bizarre position where I don't actually think he'd do any worse than Sergio Perez in Sergio's car and yet I don't think dropping him for Lawson is a bad decision either I think if you're looking for a safe pair of hands for the second seat who can deal with the pressure Daniel wouldn't necessarily be the worst shout for that second Red Bull seat for a year maybe but actually Liam Lawson should be in Formula One I don't think it's benefiting Red Bull Daniel being in that seat has he been good enough? Not really. You know, if you look at the fact that Yuki Tsunoda after this Grand Prix is on 22 points, Daniel's only on 12 for this season. That, mm. that says it all. It, it's an interesting one, isn't it? It must have been weird for Daniel Ricciardo going into this race thinking this could possibly be my last ever race in Formula One. We don't know if we'll see him again, do we? We, we don't know if it's going to be the end of his career, but that must have been in the back of his head. Yeah. He ended up getting the fastest lap. And Max Verstappen ended up saying on the team radio when he was told by Horner, thank you, Daniel, after the race. What did you make of that? Because McLaren are going to be unhappy, aren't they? In, in the past, Red Bull have tried to make out, no, we may be the same owners, but it's not simply our B team. And then something like that so clearly happens. I tweeted about this and someone, hello to at Grunty underscore Mike, who said to me, Got any proof Red Bull Racing told Daniel Ricciardo to pit for fastest lap? Or are you just chatting out your arse once again? Well, thank <laughs> Mike, the proof is that it was talked about on team radio, on the live broadcast in front of the whole world, you tit. Um, yeah, so it's clearly happened. It was there for all to see. There's Max on the radio going, thanks, Daniel. Uh, you know, it couldn't be any more obvious if it was painted on the track in white paint. Horner going... You're good, mate. Daniel Ricciardo <laughs> has got the fastest laugh. <laughs> Couldn't be any more obvious. Um, listen, it's not against the rules, right? Th there are no rules that say you can't do that. But it's at the start of the season, Zach Brown, the, the boss of McLaren, went on this big sort of 
I was going to say rant, but it wasn't a rant. It was far more controlled than that. Sort of a big sort of made a big thing of saying we don't want teams to be owned, to be owning two teams effectively. This will fuel that fire because this was, you know, Red Bull effectively using their position of owning two teams to have an impact on the championship. And if again, you know, points matter, just look at the 2021 season, one point really can matter. So um, I, I, I don't like to see it. I I don't think it's great for the sports that uh, I I think it would be better for the sport if that team wasn't owned by Red Bull. I've said that for a while. Um, I don't like it. Betty is the honest answer. I, it it gives me the ick a little bit that um, that Red Bull are able to do that. That point though could become very crucial come the end of the season. Yeah, you don't know for, for Max Verstappen. Absolutely, exactly. It could be one point in it. Uh, let's move on. Christian's cubby hole. What's in it today? What's sat there? What are you thinking? Actually, the whole point of this feature is for me to say things that have gone under the radar, and this hasn't gone under the radar. It's been widely noticed, but it's the the most obvious point to say it is um, Franco Colapinto. Love him. Alex Albon's retired from the race. Today. Today. Now, in, we've seen for the past 18 months, two, nearly two years, that if anything happens to Albon, there goes Williams' chances of scoring points. Whereas today, Colapinto was right on the edge of scoring points. His performances, his sheer speed have been fantastic ever since he stepped in the car. Um, and then look at the turn one overtake. I, I, I had to go on Twitter, actually, to find uh, someone has had handily clipped up the overtake from an F1 TV on board because the TV directors didn't show us a proper replay of it. So it's worth doing a bit of dig. I quote tweeted it. If you have a look on my Twitter, if you've missed it, it's really worth watching again. That is an in his turn one. He gained several places. That was so impressive. And Alex is going to, this is a, a spoiler of what's to come for Alex next year when he's got Carlos Sainz alongside him. He is going to find his life in Formula One considerably more difficult now he's got teammates alongside him that are more capable of battling him because Franco Colapinto is, is really impressive. And Betty, you've been saying all weekend, haven't you? He needs to be in the car in a car next year. I mean, there's one seat left. You don't think he's going to get it, do you? No, well, the rumours are that Valtteri Bottas is going to keep that seat next year and actually i totally see the logic in that but regardless if look at what's happened to in recent years hulkenberg albon lawson now good drivers who are worth a shot on the grid do tend to come back even if they have to wait a bit i would be staggered if after this run that colapinto isn't in the car either by 2026 or like we're going to see from Lawson at some point in 2025 if someone were to underperform because he is he's Martin Bundle said this in commentary and Bundle's absolutely right he wasn't anywhere near anyone's radar no one was really talking about him as someone who was going to step into Formula One unlike Ollie Behrman and Kimi Antonelli but he has put himself right in the shot window. He's supremely impressive. He deserves a seat in F1. He will get that seat in F1, I'm sure. He just might have to wait for it. I hope so, because I think everybody wants to see him have a seat in Formula One. Let's just give a mention to the F1 Academy and our pal Leah Block, because uh, she got her best result of the season in the F1 Academy this weekend. She came fourth in race two. She was brilliant. Abby Pulling absolutely dominated it uh, once again. She's on 95 points ahead in the championship. There's two races left. Uh, yeah, a great result for Leah. Worth mentioning that. Fourth, very solid. Well done, Leah. But Abby Pulling, considering everybody expected, everybody thought Darian Pan was going into F1 Academy this year as the only one that could win it, then in terms of sheer driver ability, she was head and shoulders above the rest. And Abby Pulling has turned round and gone, let's wait a minute, thank you, don't forget about me, and has been just been absolutely fantastic. And I have said this on the podcast before, but it's worth saying again for anyone who's missed it. I sort of watched the moment in the F1 paddock where this happened, where she took pole position in Miami on real strong pace. And you sort of saw everyone go, oh, she's in this. Yeah. And she's not just winning the championship. She's winning it by a country mile. She's on 245 points pulling, pound on 150 sensational from her this year sensational so um we need to get abby back on the podcast when she inevitably wins the championship because she's had a phenomenal year oh we will we will and um, before we finish i just want to say i've done a little bit of um googling oh, and because yeah. i just can't stop thinking about what this community service is going to be for max verstappen you can't get it out of your head i can't get it out of my head i just i'm just i just want to know anyway somebody says it's spinning around your head would you say this is on a <laughs> 
Sorry, I need I need I need to jump in here. Christian has been planting Kylie Minogue lyrics throughout this episode, and Betty yeah. hasn't pulled him up on it. Has he? Oh, I haven't even noticed. I've almost stopped yeah. the recording to yeah. <laughs> to interrupt him. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, producer Jimmy, to the podcast here. It had to be said, because Greg walked out when he did the ABBA pun last week. I nearly walked out with that Kylie Minogue one. Tell you what, if Jimmy walked out, I should be so lucky. Yeah, I'm going to get community service for swearing at Christian in a minute. Um, But yes, Betty, carry on. I do end up just ignoring Christian though, to be fair. It just goes over my head after a while. It, It just doesn't stand out for me. I'm sorry. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. No, that was one. That was one. Yeah, see, I, that didn't, I didn't click for me. Sorry, I'm not that well versed on Kylie Minogue. Betty, he's ill. Just carry on. <laughs> anyway, this is actually a really interesting point that I'm trying to say here. So can I? Can you just listen for a sec and stop thinking about Kylie Minogue? Anyway, someone said last time Max Verstappen had to do community service, he had to shadow the stewards at a Formula E race and go through exactly what they have to do on a race weekend. Where was this? I missed this. <laughs> Who said this? Loads of people are saying this. So it was in. It was. It was. He had to be an observer to stewards at a Formula E race in Marrakesh. Well, that's a step back in time, wasn't it? He had to take an educational and informative approach to his punishment, handing him two days of public service, the first of which involved him being an observer to the stewards at the Formula E race in Marrakesh. Oh, yeah. That was his first day. Second day, he had to take part in an interactive case study with some sort of session with race officials at the FIA International Stewards Programme event, which involved... Uh, deliberating with the stewards and deciding an appropriate penalty. Oh, just tell them you're not going to do it, Max. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? You know what I mean? Just say no. Find me. Imagine. Whatever. Max, pack your bags, mate. You're off to a Formula E event. Absolutely not. No. You're going to shadow the stewards and see how they do things. I just tell you what, Max, I think I fully support the way you've raced this weekend. I wouldn't change a thing. Oh, well, I'm sure he'll listen to that and think, thank you very much, Christian Hugill. I'm going to take that to the heart and now I feel better about everything. That that was another Kylie Minogue reference. He's 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 still doing it. I'm ignoring it. Jimmy, just ignore it. I don't can't. let don't let it get to you. Don't bite. Jimmy, just think, better the devil you know. I'll ignore it and carry on. <laughs> Jimmy, deep breaths, okay? Just breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. It's actually quite impressive. <laughs> it is. I tell you what's also impressive. I tell you what's really impressive. NordVPN. It's, it's NordVPN. It's really impressive. And Betty, considering you were on holiday and posted an Instagram story about your holiday every three seconds, even when you're in bed with the <laughs> how helpful for NordVPN, <laughs> how helpful for you was it? Do you know what? When I had food poisoning, yeah. NordVPN did help me through that really difficult time. Because when you're on holiday, you can be on your iPad, on your phone, on your laptop or whatever, and you can watch whatever you want with NordVPN all over the world. You can change your virtual location. It's amazing. There's nothing worse than being on a holiday. It's hot. You're stuck in your room. You're stuck on the toilet. Your head's spinning around. There's nothing worse, is there? No, my head wasn't spinning around. My head was firmly on the pillow in deep agony from dehydration. And I'm not going to laugh at your Kylie Minogue reference one more time. But if you're abroad and you've got NordVPN, you can go on your your phone, your computer, your laptop, and you can look up Kylie Minogue songs and play them to yourself whenever you want. Mm. You can use NordVPN to help you save money as well. So if you're planning your next Grand Prix or trip somewhere to go on holiday, you can you can look at flights and you can choose the cheapest flights, hotel fees as well, depending on where you book from. So you can change your location and get cheaper tickets. It's incredible, Christian. Yeah, you might be planning a trip to the Vegas Grand Prix and the, the, the timing, the, you know, using your NordVPN might be a Vegas high for you. Is that a Kylie Minogue song? I didn't know. Yes, yes, it is. Yes. It's also super safe as well because it protects your data when you're using public Wi-Fi. So wherever you are in the world, you can be safe. To get your best discount off your NordVPN plan, go to nordvpn.com forward slash TFATC. Our link will also give you an extra four months on the two-year plan. And, guys, there's no risk with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the description of the episode. There's a big gap now uh, between the next Grand Prix, which is in Austin, Texas, but we will be back later in the week for a look at some of the biggest talking points in Formula One, a bit of a stock take of the season so far. We've got a lot to get through. The DMs and comments have been very busy with nicknames for Oscar Piastri. We want to give him a proper nickname, so we'll be going through that. We've also, Betty, I don't know if you spotted that when you were away, I took the opportunity to geek out with Greg about models. Yeah, I'm glad I wasn't there, to be honest. 
that blew up. People love models. So I think there's a bit more to be said on that. Oh, people do. And I think there's more to be said on the Ricardo Lawson situation. So anything else you want us to discuss in the week, please, for our next episode, while it's a bit of a break, fast, curious pods. Or if you want to come on and have a chat to us, we've not spoke to some listeners for a while, have we? So we'll come on and maybe have a little bit of a chat. Mm. Um, And um, that will be on the next episode of The Fast and the Curious. Remember, we do a race debrief like this after each and every race. I don't always put Kylie Minogue references in them, but I enjoy doing so today. And we also take time out to talk to the biggest names in the sports. We've recently had on the likes of Randy Singh, McLaren's racing director. Who else have we spoken to recently, Betty? We've had Leah Block. We've had George Russell. um... Mike Crack! Mike Crack. We had Mike Crack on, and that was a throwback to our Christmas episode last year where producer Jimmy went to the top <laughs> of the stairs of the audience and shouted Mike Crack because we'd forgotten him listing. So Mike, Mike's been on, yeah? But yeah, subscribe to the podcast. Leave us a review as well. So let, let us know what you think of it. We always love a, a review, preferably five star, but, I mean, do what you want. And uh, we'll be back soon. Thank you for listening. Yeah, don't do what you want. Give us five star. Otherwise, if you've not got anything nice to say, keep it to yourself. I enjoyed that episode, Betty. I thought we got into a real groove. <laughs> See you later. Thank you.